kilogram. That's actually a pretty valuable uh -huh. crate of scrap gold that I got off eBay. A lot of times they'll sell broken necklaces and whatnot, and so it's a little bit cheaper than real necklaces. And it's pushed by a constant force of 10 newtons to the right along level ground. The crate's velocity is a constant 6.31 meters per second to the right, and we're trying to find the force of gravity, the normal force, and the force of friction on the crate. Okay? And now, we enter the problem-solving format. How do we do this problem? Diagram. What does it say? Look at what it says right there. Physical diagram. Draw well, a physical diagram. It says, okay, so I'm thinking that I probably need to have a horizontal ground and a crate full of gold. And what else? Gravity. So I am not making a force diagram right here. This is a physical diagram. Oh. So Push. we can play the velocity and XL. Okay, so we have it going that direction, and maybe I also want to have somebody <laughs> pushing this way. That's a really big crate. Right? Yeah, it's, it's almost empty. This is not recording, but Maya's recording. Whoa! Stay focused! Shouldn't your force diagram show speeding up? Yo, I do not have a force diagram. This is a physical diagram. Physical diagram, my bad. Okay, is it speeding up? Yeah, it's, a, it's by a constant force. Well, it says the direct. Oh, yeah, no, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, so I'm going to write up here V, and I'm putting it to the right, and I'm going to label it as 6.31 meters per second. What else should I be adding up here? The Oh, the max. So I'm gonna write M equals 5.00 kilograms. You only you only have one. Whoa! Whoa! Thanks. What else? Acceleration. Acceleration. What's that? Zero. Zero. Oh, it's zero. Zero. Gravity. Zero. Gravity. Zero. Gravity. So uh, I want to know what else I need to add to this diagram. What you got? Force of gravity. The force of gravity does not go on in a physical diagram. I don't know that. Oh, okay. So I could say that this force is 10 newtons. Force equals 10 newtons. Is it 10.0? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, what else? The crate's velocity is given right here. What else? So something else to add to the physical diagram. Come on, guys. All of you together are not seeing what else needs to be added here. No, not really. Yeah. Oh, don't add forces up here. Coordinate axis? You just add all the stuff. Yeah, coordinate so, axes. It's a provided force, so I wanted to put it up there. What? Coordinate. Yeah. Coordinate axes. Yeah. Put some coordinates up here, sure. Oh boy. Uh, not really here. We can put it here or in the force diagram because it's going to be the same way. What else? Nope. What else? Hey, we can't move on from the physical oh, like diagram the if you don't tell me what it is. Oh, the what? The, like, the that we've just done. That. Love that. It defined the system for crying out loud. Yeah, it does not include the person, but it does include the crate. There we go. Good. Next line. Identify your sign convention indicating the designated positive direction. So that was right there that we just did a little bit early. Next up. Given. Write down your given information. All right. So the givens are already in the diagram, but I need to write them in equation form right here. I'm going to write this 10 newtons. How do I label the 10 newtons? Force what? Gravity. Force. No. No, force, push. It's it's gravitational. It is not a gravitational force. That's a push on the crate by the person. person. Okay. And then uh, what else? I need to write down the mass of the crate, 5.0 kilograms. What else? Velocity. Velocity of the crate, 6.31 meters per second, and acceleration of the crate equals zero. So I guess I don't need the subscript for the crate because it's the only stuff that's moving. Um, I like putting it on the mass because sometimes you'll have problems with two masses on it, so we'll just be careful right there. Anything else? Direction? Uh, no, the direction is implied. You could say right here in the x direction. You could write toward x if you wanted. I think that's a great idea. We'll just put that right there. And the velocity right here could also be toward x. Of course, in, in this step right here, we would identify if any of these forces were to the left, we would put a minus sign in front of them. This one or that one. <clears throat> but we've made them both to the right, so we're cool. And then I'm supposed to identify my find as well. Find what? 
uh, force, force of, of gravity, gravity, force of normal, normal force, force and friction. Force of gravity on the crate by the earth, force normal on the crate by the uh, ground, and what else? Force of friction. Force of friction on the crate, on the crate, crate by, by the, the ground. Ground also. Cool. So I have three forces that I'm trying to find, and what's the next step, say? Right, uh, John label a force diagram. According with the guidelines established in class, we're going to be so good at this, right? So here's the bat. What else? Gravity. Uh, force gravitational. Push, force gravity. A gravitational force should be drawn first, and that gravitational force is on the box by the Earth. What else? Oh, Sorry, Ben, what? The force pushing the uh, Which way? To the X direction. So that force right there, that's the force of the push on the box by the person. Sorry, not a box, it's a crate. Sorry, it's a crate. All right, what else? Normal force. Normal force, which way? Up. Normal to the surface, Why? right? Yeah. So it's gonna be an upward force. How big is it? <laughs> Alex, is the normal force always the same as the force of gravity? No, it is not. Oh, Alex, we can remember him in spirit that <laughs> it is not always the same force. Is there a leftward force here? Yeah. Friction. Mm -hmm. That way, and that's the force of friction on the crate by the ground. Yeah, because it's constant velocity. What do you want? Double tick right there? Double tick? Okay, cool. I'm going to make this a little bit longer so that I'm a little bit more convincing. What's the next step? Then write an equation that describes the net force acting on your system based on motion. We've already done this step also, right? Write an equation that describes the net force on the system based on motion. Uh, it says it's a two-dimensional problem, so we should do this both x and y. Ladies and gentlemen, this is also a step that we have already done. You agree? Indeed. Cool. Now we need to get all up into the face of the problem. In each dimension, determine the net force, because this is a statement that is actually an instruction. It says, get me the net force. That means add up the forces in the x direction. This says add up the forces in the y direction. And so I think that it makes more sense to do the x and then do the x, do the x, do the x, and then come back and do the y. So if it's all right with you, we know this, but I'm going to bring that back into play later. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So fine. This net force in the x direction. There are two forces in the x direction, and one of them is, uh, so let's write this here. I'm going to write the net force in the x direction equals the force of push on the crate by the person plus the force of friction on the crate by the ground. Those two things are now added together, and I have the net force in the x direction. Cool? Yes? Yes. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing in the y direction. The net force in the, wow, that's about it for that one. The net force in the y direction is, uh, well, it's zero, right? And the net force in the y direction is also, now I'm adding them up, I'm saying it's the normal force in, on the crate by the ground plus the gravitational force on the crate by the earth. Anything here surprising you so far? No. Okay. Because like we kind of have done these things, we haven't written this line yet, but that's what it means to say, what's the net force? We are adding up the forces. And then the next step is a little bit weird. What does it say to do? Replace the vector notation with forces with magnitude. Okay, so how am I going to know the magnitude of these two forces right here? Negative and positive. One of them is negative and the other one is positive. How do I know which one's negative and which one's positive? Based on your diagram. Charlie Blake, which one of these is negative? Awesome. So I write F P C P minus F F C G, and I'm finished with that line. Let's do the same thing over here. Rory, which of those two forces is excuse me, negative? Uh, well, we're both up and down. So what are these two different I have to find. Indeed, that is correct. We say the normal force on the crate by the ground is in the positive direction, and the gravitational force on the crate by the Earth is in the negative direction. Uh, Mr. Rice, who taught here a couple of years ago, would insist that you put a plus sign right here. I do not need that. I do not need that plus sign right there. I'm going to assume that you understand that if it was not a minus sign, it's in the positive direction. Ben. Uh, 
So you don't need those extra signs above the S on either side? I explicitly don't have them anymore because I've built in the information about the direction of the vector via the minus sign or the implied plus sign. If I put the vector signs on it, I have to add the vectors. Here, I am adding or subtracting the magnitudes as is appropriate. Now, obviously, we can't do that for vectors that are in weird directions, so I'm going to use only the components in lines like this, the x components and the y components. This is very much like taking r sub x and r sub y, finding them by taking a sub x and a sub y, for instance. Okay. Yes? Are we allowed to like, skip 8 because we're already, because it says in number 8 that we do plus negative, mm -hmm. and then in number 9 it says, um, well, number nine is basically what we're doing right now. Yeah, that's our big advantage. Eight and nine are kind of what wrapped into a single step okay. in our new process. Number ten, what does it say to do? Uh, the results of the original equation together with the sum of the step nine. Okay, so I'm supposed to take this and plug it in here. Similarly, I'm going to take this and plug it in there. That says zero equals the normal force of the on the crate by the ground minus the gravitational force on the crate by the earth. You see what you could do with that equation? That's pretty awesome, right? And over here, I'm gonna say zero equals the push force on the crate by the person minus the frictional force on the crate by the ground. Cool, now what? Uh, solve the equation for the unknown force. Okay, and what forces do you want to know? The, the force of gravity on the crate by the Oh, I see that over here. I can solve that equation for the thing that I want by adding it to both sides. So I will get F sub G equals F sub N uh, C G C E. That relationship is true. And also I can, wait, which of these do I not know? The force of the friction. Okay, so I'm going to try to solve it for this by adding this quantity to both sides. The force of friction on the crate by the ground equals the force of push on the crate by the person. That means the magnitude of the force of friction equals the magnitude of the force of the push on the crate by the person. And so we are finished finding one of the things. F of friction on the crate by the ground equals 10 point, was it 10? Oh gosh, I hope it was 10. 10.0 newtons, and then I also, I want to go one step further, and I want to say which direction it is. Which way? In the negative direction. So I could write to the left. Or, I could put a minus sign right here, and write to the right. Okay? Or, I could put a minus sign right there, and I could say in x direction. But the minus sign means that it's in the negative <coughs> direction. Cool? Mark? Do we then have to define in our um, axis thing what's up and what's right? Uh, oh, if I use up and right? Yeah. No, I will know which way is up and right, but it's always a good idea to define it anyway. I can understand the side view pretty well. Yes? Is um, the force problem, like solving the force problems, is it going to be on that test that you talked about? The quiz? the quiz? No, it will definitely be on the next test, but not on the quiz. So this equation, we don't know either one of them. So we're going to need another equation. There's a, is there a point in there where it says get another equation? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Oh man, so we're done? Yeah, I guess. Yes. No. Yeah. 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 Can I get some stamps back? We're not done, homie. We're, I'm done. Homie. How much does the crate weigh? What equation? 9.81 Earth force of gravity equals mass times baby G. I'm going to take that and plug it in right there. Oh. Right? So you'd have to show that step. And then you'd be able to say that the normal force is the same magnitude as the gravitational force, but opposite directions. This last step here where you're specifying the direction, this is one of our answers, and so I put it in a box. And I'll have two other box answers. Sorry, this is not a box answer. Well, can you, but I didn't even make that. Is there like examples of this? Can we solve that? Okay, so we do five children times oh. eight, eight one. The answer for force of gravity on the crate by the earth. Yeah. 49 point what? Why'd you say it was 
Forty-nine point zero five. But how many sixes do we have? Uh, two. So that is the gravitational force. I tell you what, I'm going to get my stamps done, and then if you want to stick around and ask me a question or two, you could do so. Thanks, Maya, for filming. I want to thank all the people who have come before me, in particular Alex Papian, who has come and gone, and here we are.